In this video, we're going to look at some more tips for people going from Fusion, going to FreeCAD. It's probably just as applicable for anybody who's just using FreeCAD. But I'm coming from Fusion, so that's kind of why I put these together. So the next thing is some parametric um, design with using a spreadsheet to drive the dimensions. So we can do that very easily. What we do is we go into the spreadsheet workbench and we create a new spreadsheet. And then we're going to have um, a couple of dimensions. So let's say we have the length. We're just going to lay these labels are not important to uh, drive <clears throat> the shape. So we can say that and we can say thickness maybe. And that will give us three um, pieces that we want to do. One thing that's important to know is you can do um, tile in windows so now i can see both windows i can see my spreadsheet here and i can see this guy here so so that's uh again an important um, aspect to understand because we want to be able to um we want to be able to see our spreadsheet alongside our dimensions here so so what we're going to do is we are going to drive some dimensions on this guy um, from the spreadsheet sketch yeah so we're going to the sketch and then we're going to call this dimension from here to here we're going to call that our length and so right now it's 215 so i'm going to make the length 215 just to keep it similar and then what we do is we can call this here length and now that field turns yellow and it means that there's an alias of length so if i go back in here and edit this guy and i hit this little button here i can say spreadsheet and then i can say length say okay and you see immediately it becomes this dimension. And I change this dimension. You see it got bigger. And if I make it smaller, you can see that it gets smaller. So it drives the model directly. From the sketch point of view, you have to just go into the dimension and to get it to update. Um, so going back to my sketch, I could then take this one that already exists and I'm going to make that guy the width, and it's 60, so I'm going to call that 60. So I put the alias in there. There's another way you can do this alias. You can actually go here and hit properties, and then you can set the alias right there. But on version uh, 19, I can go from up here, just add the alias. So let's go spreadsheet again. And now you should see width show up. So there it is right there. Hit it there. Boom. Boom. Done. Now it's driven by this. So whatever I make that, it's going to change this dimension. And I, of course, I can do that for everything else that, that's on the part. So we can, right now, I can change these guys. 60. Boom. It's very similar to what you had in Fusion. Uh, very simple to do here in FreeCAD. So one thing that was a little um, odd to me or didn't work the way I expected it to, I shouldn't say odd because that's a little disingenuous. It works, but it's the, the process is not as intuitive as I thought it would be. So basically what I have is two bodies here. So I have this guy, which is just a, a pad right now. And I have this revolution guy. And I want to join or cut or do something in a Boolean fashion between those two. So the way you do it is you make one body active by double clicking it. Whichever body you want this to all end up in is the one you double click. Then you select outside of there. So nothing is actually selected. Then you hit this Boolean, right? I'm still in part design because it works slightly different if you're in um, part if you're just in the part workbench, I'm in the part design workbench. So I hit this Boolean and now I have to add a body. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add body. And it's going to be this body. And so you can see it there. And now I can choose to fuse it, to cut it or to do a common, which means it's going to be the intersection of both. It looks like the common doesn't work very well because it's not showing a result. So fuse would stick that piece on there. So I have it stuck on there. I'm going to do a cut because I think it'll be cooler. So just do a cut and there you have it. So the important part is how you select things. So you select the body that you want it all to end up in, and then you select the second body after you've hit the Boolean operation. When you select the first body, you click in a space so that you haven't got any of the parts selected, hit Boolean, add the second body, and then you can choose to cut or fuse or however you want that to work. So the next thing I think is useful is setting up a Dayton plane. So I can use this little guy up here. I'm back in the part design workbench. I've got my model here, and this is just a, I'm not actually designing anything I care about. This is just for demonstration purposes. What I'm going to do is I'll take this datum plane and then I can say, let's go along this edge. So now that datum plane is on the end. And then, of course, I can do an offset on this datum plane. I can actually move that datum plane by a given amount along that part. And then I can say, OK. And now if I want to create a sketch at that datum plane, I just say create a sketch, pick that datum plane and say, OK. And now my sketch is going to be on that date and plane. So if I just draw a quick something there, you can see my sketch is right there. And then, of course, I could pad that. And I can do whatever I want to do with it for padding. So say OK. And there it is. Date and planes stay on unless you turn them off. And to turn things on and off, I'm just hitting the space bar. So I select it. Hit the space bar. So I want to turn that sketch on. I select it. Hit the space bar. Space bar. So that turns things on and off. And there it is with my new pad. So my whole thing now includes that old pad I just created. One thing we do know about, of course, is there are sometimes topology issues if you um, center things or set things up on a face, and that face uh, changes its name. When you do a recompute, then you lose all your references. So with those planes, it might actually be better to set it up from the XY plane and do your offset. So if you're doing a Dayton plane, set it up from the XY plane and then offset it from there. And you can still lock that offset to the amount of the model. Um, so if wherever you want it on the model, you can do that and make that the driving dimension. So it does work, but you just have to be a little careful about the uh, topology issue. If the face changes its name, you lose all your references and your model blows up. So I'm going to end this video here because it's already nine minutes long. I want to try and keep these as short as I can. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please like this video and subscribe to the channel because there's another one coming soon after this, which is a continuation with some more tips. And then we're going to move on to something else. If there's something in particular you want to see, feel free to comment on the video and I'll try and do the things that you're uh, you're requesting thanks